I watch my tone to make sure that I don't come off as threatening. Just leaving the house some days, you know, it's, it's sometimes it just keep you at home and just keep you away from everything. Anything that I say is going to come across from my filter and it's going to be seen possibly badly. The discussion immediately ends. It's a classic case of the vocal minority versus the silent majority, where the only argument we hear is the, the ones who speak. 71% of Americans say that being PC has silenced discussions we need to be having. If you think that one post or one negative comment is going to change the world, you're wrong. The problem right now with social media is you can say something and it's a one-sided argument. You don't have to listen to other people. And so there needs to be a way or a conversation, and there, it's always been like this, but where people wake the fuck up and listen to just accepting somebody's thoughts. For me, the biggest challenge is figuring out how to deal with that discourse in my personal life because it's very draining emotionally to like confront these things. So there's a part of me that's like, oh, let me just not engage, let me just kind of like go underground and just not talk to anybody and just kind of ignore what's happening so I can just preserve my own mental well-being. But then there's another part where I'm like, okay, no, I need to say something and like, you know, have these conversations. You go online and you see all of these forums where people are just getting angry and shouting at each other and resorting to name calling and saying like, oh, you leftists and oh, you alt-right bigots. You're not gonna get through anyone that way because we are programmed as humans to view people in in-groups and out-groups. And as long as we view people as in the out-group, we're gonna think that they're different than us. My best friend is black. So, you know, I see what she goes through. She doesn't wanna shop at a store too long or people think she's stealing, you know, things like that, that I do not have to deal with. And I know that, that that is a privilege that I have, you know, or privilege that lighter skinned people have. But yet at the same time, I see it, so I am very aware of it because I have very close friends that are of other ethnicities that do face certain stereotypes. The second that you embrace an ism or identify, be it a female versus male, be it black versus white, you affiliate yourself with a faction of people that says, I'm different, I'm not like you, I'm proud of this, and that slippery slope of being proud means that I shun you. And we do things in the name of being proud or trying to, to make a road or path that we don't realize how isolating that can be and how detrimental that can be to our growth as a society. America is a prototype for the future because this is the way the world is gonna be. It's gonna be a painful road there, but it will eventually happen, maybe in a thousand years. And I think this country is, I think this is the first step to that. If there's a way that we can use our identities to help each other, it's just to appreciate the fact that this is what makes us special. I think that we're gonna be unified one day, and that's happening, and what we're feeling, the things, the tremors, and the kind of, like, how harsh it is sometimes, and like, the revolutions we go through sometimes are a bit more drastic than others, is definitely all in a, in a very positive direction. And the harder it gets is usually because it's a really big thing that needed to be tackled, you know?